Hello, good evening. Can you hear me? Welcome to everyone joining us tonight. Uh, I'm David Lee, the admin manager at the Puri New College head office. How are you? Yeah. I'm very happy to be hosting tonight's education webinar. Thank you. Yes. Okay. So uh, this webinar is prepared for year five parents, especially those who are new to the uh, selective school placement process. So I will be providing you with the information about next year's selective school exam 2024. And it will include the details of application process and test format outcome and also the tips on how to prepare for the exam. Okay, uh, before we begin, I just want to cover a few housekeeping items. Uh, uh, I know you have many questions. So if you want to ask any question during the webinar, uh, please use the chat box and to send your question to me. And I will be happy to answer them at the end of the uh, webinar, yeah, the Q&A session. And also, uh, please note, uh, we are recording this webinar session, so you will have a chance to rewatch or replay the recorded video at your convenient time. Yeah. So, okay. Okay. So, without further ado, let's dive right in now. Yeah, firstly, I'd like to express my gratitude for your unwavering support for your child's studies throughout this term. Uh, we are now nearly end of the term, so we are wrap up term one, and we are very busy to prepare for the uh, term reports for your child that will be released uh, during next week, yeah, week 10, during week 10, yeah, we will provide the term test report you know, with lots of feedback. Yeah. Okay. And also we have finalized the schedule for the coming autumn holiday and new term courses. So please take a moment to review the college newsletter for further details. Okay. Okay, the selective school. Yeah. It's a very challenging goal to our students. Okay? So achieving entry into the selective school is very challenging, yet very rewarding goal. Yeah? So let's uh, try our best and stay up to date uh, to make it succeed yeah, next year. So selective schools are designed to cater the academically gifted students, highly potential students, you know, and they provide accelerated curriculum and teaching program uh, that will enable the high achieving students to thrive. And also the selective school foster uh, environment of the cooperation and networking among bright and high achieving students that helps to challenge and support one another. So it will make it easier for them to establish academic and social network that are beneficial in the long run. So that's why the students who attend selective school, uh, they tend to excel in the HSC performance and very high ATAR and get a university entrance. Yeah, when where they wish to go and good major studies. So with all these benefits, uh, it's no surprise that gaining entry into the selective school is an excellent goal. Yeah. And it is very worthwhile pursuit. Yeah. Let's make a good goal to set. Okay, in New South Wales, there are a total of 47 selective high schools for year seven entry. 
So these include 17 fully selective schools. They all classes are academically selective. And four fully selective agricultural high school, which uh, prioritize the study of agriculture science. Okay. And also there are 26 partially selective school where one or two classes, which are selective classes, but there are another uh, group, non-selective uh, classes for local students. So, so for students in partially selective, uh, they will attend the separate classes for English, mathematics, and science studies, but all other uh, subject, yeah, uh, it, it, it typically the join with uh, the non-selective student together. So yeah, that's the difference between partially and fully selective. Fully selective school means they are all selective students. Yeah. So the selective school is, they are not, uh, there, there is no the join, the, they are on join the school. So that means the parents can apply for any schools of the three schools, regardless of their uh, location, where they live. So you may choose any selective school as you wish. So as you can see, uh, 47 selected school, uh, about 70% of the school, the placement for year seven will be taken by the fully selected schools. Yeah. Each fully selected school, yeah, they will accept around 120 to 180 students uh, uh, year seven. Okay. So you can find our detailed uh, school list from the Department of Education website. So I'm just using the, the acronym of the each selected school. Yes, you will get an idea. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Competition. Yeah. Very high competition. Yeah. The demand. The high demand. Yeah, we make very extreme competition, you know? Yeah. So about 15,000, yeah, last year, 15,500, yeah, they took the entrance exam for the selective school placement. And, you know, the 47 selective school, all together, the number of available places is 4,248. Yeah, that's the... Uh, available places. So this means only uh, around 23%, top 23% of students will have a chance to get in. Yeah. So just one quarter. Yeah. And also, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, also, uh, from last year, uh, they introduced a new equity placement model yeah, to promote equity and diversity. So uh, they will reserve maximum 20% of the available prices for educationally disadvantaged and underrepresented students like averaging you know, disability, students who live in you know, remote areas, you know, so <clears throat> that means the competition for general application, general applicant has become even more intense. Yeah. Yeah. So with this in mind, yeah, it's crucial for students to begin the preparing for the test as early as possible. Yeah. Without adequate preparation, and success in this highly competitive exam is, is unlikely, you know, it's very hard to get in, yeah. Okay, let's take a look at the schedule for the uh, next year's uh, selective school placement process. Yeah. So usually uh, the high performance student unit will open the application for the selective school on in October, yeah, middle of October. And the parents should complete the application online 
by middle of November. So it happened during term four. Yeah, this year term four, uh, you will start the application complete by the due date. Yeah, middle of November. And then uh, your application will be confirmed by your child school principal yeah, in November and December. Yeah. And next year, um, you will get the test osteotelera in April, yeah. just two weeks before the exam date. Yeah. yeah. So this year's exam day is uh, 4th of May. Uh, so I think next year's uh, exam date looks like around 2nd May, yeah, I guess. Yeah, it's usually in May, early May. And then uh, the outcome would be released to the parents in August, yeah, early August. Yeah. So they haven't announced the actual uh, official date for the 2024 year. So once we got a, a updated information, yes, I will share with you. Yeah, without hesitation, I will send an email to all our parents with the latest information, yeah. Yeah, as usual. Okay, so on the exam day, yeah, uh, students will sit for the exam consisting four sections of the exam. So there are reading, mathematical reasoning, thinking skills, and writing. So the total 105 multiple choice question plus one extra writing task. And all together, it did take about two and a half hours to complete all test component. Yeah. Usually, the exam will start at 9 a.m. Yeah. and finish at around 11.50 a.m. Yeah. So, two and a half hours. And there are some break between the test. Yeah. Um, yeah, the test format, I think it will be paper-based test. Yeah. This year's test would be paper-based. And previously, they just considered some sort of online test trial, but they failed. So they just to, yeah, return to the paper-based test. Yeah. And I think next year test will be also paper test. Yeah. If anything changes, yeah, we will immediately let you know. Yeah. That or any changes. Okay. Based on uh, our year six students' feedback, uh, I think the most challenging exam would be reading test. Yeah. Everybody said the reading contains lots of uh, reading students. They need to read fast and uh, find an answer for for that each passage and yeah, stimulus text. So the reading test will be very important. Okay? And also they will no longer uh, apply any school assessment mark. So there is no school mark. Yeah. So the placement process will just based on the exam performance, yeah. test the score. Yeah. So uh, if they couldn't attend the test, if they are unable to attend the test, then uh, they may refer to the NAPLAN test performance. That's why the NAPLAN is now more important than before. Yeah? Yeah. So usually it will be based on actual selective exam score, yeah? the performance. Yeah. So to get into the top selective school, you go. Performance standards should be all top 10%. Yeah. So when they assess the students' test performance, uh, there is some weighting for each test component. As you can see, this pie chart is a relative weighting, the percentage of each test component. Yeah. Reading 25%, writing 15%, and thinking skills 35% and mathematical reasoning 25%. Yeah. 
Yeah. So you can see the English component score. The proportion of English component score is relatively higher than others. Yeah. So reading and writing, 40%, and then 35% from the thinking skill. So yes, the English part, reading and writing test is very important test component. Yeah. So we need to develop very high level of English skills. It becomes a very important issue nowadays. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't have to worry about mathematical reasoning. All our students are very good at mathematics. Most students should have no problem with mathematics. Yeah. But the thinking skills, especially the critical thinking skills, and reading, comprehension, and writing is the very important component yeah, for the exam. Okay. Yeah. So if you want to check the previous past papers, yes, it's available on the website, the Department of Education website. They published the last two years past papers, and you can download the paper. Yeah. And then uh, if your child haven't, hasn't tried yet, yeah, yeah. please let them try on the exam conditions, the 40 minutes for each test. Okay, yeah, this QR code is the direct link to the uh, yeah, test paper website. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, we already uh, published the special uh, YouTube video, the exam question analysis video, based on the recent uh, exam, last 2022 exam. Okay. So you please check out and it's also available on the cyber school and also our YouTube channel. So you, you will get a better idea once you just to check them out. Yeah. Okay. So uh, in this webinar session, uh, we will focusing on the reading test component. So to help us with this task, I have invited uh, Miss Kelly. Uh, she is working with us for a long time as an educational consultant for selective school exam preparation and also uh, lots of resource development. She is involved in lots of uh, projects with our R&D team and uh, she will provide more in-depth in the reading test component. Okay. Okay. Uh, please welcome Miss Kelly. Jones, how are you, Kelly? Thank you, David. Can you I'm hear me? Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Okay. Okay. Yes, if you are when you are ready, you can start. Yes, I'm ready. All right. So as uh, David has just introduced me, thank you. My name is Kelly Jones. I am an English teacher, but I've been doing some a lot of curriculum advising over the past years and with pre-uni. Uh, specifically looking at the selective school exams. So I'll be giving you today some of my best knowledge and tips about that selective school reading uh, exam and especially today the reading component of that exam. So just for a little bit of context, I will go through these four uh, steps in the webinar. I'm first going to discuss with you the renewed focus of the selective test because you may or may not be aware that it has changed in the last few years and it's useful to know how that the test has changed and the reasons why. Then I will go through just a very brief overview of the reading comprehension skills that are required to really excel in the test the types of questions you can expect to find in the test, and then some tips at the end on how to manage the actual environment and uh, situation of being under the pressure of uh, time conditions and the test conditions. Okay, so to begin with, basically the New South Wales government did a review into the selective schools test and the whole system and they came to 
a new understanding of how they, they were going to select basically the students. So as David mentioned, there was something like over 15,000 students apply this last year and then only less than a third of those students uh, are successful. So the point of selective and OC education is to target the innate talent and high potential and gifted students rather than only testing uh, the acquisition or the memorization of knowledge or information. And that's because that old style of testing could be really influenced by factors including privilege. So the way that the new testing is designed, it really improves the equity so that all students have an equal chance of succeeding in the test and some of those other factors are removed. So the first group of students that are being targeted in the selective schools and in the test are those that we consider to have high potential. So high potential students, their ability exceeds that of students of the same age. So these students, um, they really benefit from what we call an enriched or an extended curriculum and that is offered at a selective high school. The next group of students targeted in these tests are what we refer to as gifted. So gifted students are students that have the potential that is significantly or significantly exceeds those of students of the same age. So the key word there is uh, identifying the potential and the thinking skills part of the test really uh, focuses on that. They typically develop talent and they achieve master, mastery sorry, uh, much faster than their peers. And the third group of students are referred to as highly gifted students and they vastly exceed students of the same age. In this case, a selective setting is ideal because um, significant curriculum adjustments like totally different assessments and teaching and learning styles, for example, are required in order to meet their learning and their well-being needs. So that's why it's so competitive. It's not just a, a case of um, how much information you can memorize or learn anymore. It's really focusing on the skills. So you want your children or students to develop and master those skills, the thinking, the reading, the writing, and application skills, uh, as opposed to content. It's a good change. Um, so opportunity classes are, are the same in nature. They're specifically designed to provide those learning conditions that are optimal for students in this area. Okay, so now we're going to move on to reading comprehension skills specifically. In the selective test, there's 30 questions uh, based on a range of different texts. And as David mentioned, there's 40 minutes allocated to that part of the test. So it's not a long time and being able to read quickly, uh, find information and read for detail quickly, being fluent, all of these skills are essential to be able to get through the reading in that short 40 minutes. So the questions are based on a whole diverse range of texts. They're unseen texts, so nobody knows what those texts are until the day of the test. And they come from different genres, so we can expect to see um, or not just genres, different text types, I mean. So we'll find perhaps inf informative text, entertaining text, persuasive text. They can be examples of poetry. Some of them include imagery. There's extracts from novels, a whole wide range um, of texts for the test. So again, it's not about the content. Uh, learning. It's, it's acquiring and mastering the skills of reading. So on the bullet points you can see here, this is not an exhaustive but a very good starting point of the types of reading comprehension skills that we find in the questions, uh, not just in the selective test, in, in all education right up to, to the HSC and beyond. 
So I'm not going to read that list because I'm about to go through each one, uh, but you can see for yourself finding the main idea, recalling facts and details, understanding sequencing, cause and effect. These types of standard reading skills are what we want our students to really master in order to succeed uh, in the test and beyond. Now, the 2022 test included these extracts or these texts. Uh, the first one was a narrative extract from the novel The Call of the Wild. Now, that's quite an advanced and sophisticated text. The vocabulary is, is complex and wonderful. So that was a challenging read. It was compared and contrasted in the first part of the test with a factual extract from the effect of pets on humans. And that was uh, from 2016. So as you can see, I mean, just the context alone of those two texts is completely different. Uh, but there were some similarities. The Call of the Wild is about the relationship between this man and his pet dog, if you don't, oh, it's not really a pet dog, dog, if you don't know. So that's what the, the connection between the two texts was there. The next part of the test was, and usually is, about poetry. Again, a challenging text. You can look this one up online. I don't think it's on the department site because of publishing issues, but you can certainly just find it in Google. It's called The Wave by Tom Gunn, highly metaphorical. So there was a lot of um, work to be done about reading through figurative language techniques to find meaning for those questions. The next section were the literary text extract summary. So this is where students are given a series of summaries and, and statements and they need to match them um, or allocate them. So the theme for all of those summaries was our fascination with Mars and there were some informative and some entertaining texts all around the topic of Mars. And then finally we had matching um, some extracts on the theme, oh, sorry, my screen is just in the wrong spot. Um, so that's also based on a theme, and in this case, it was heroes. So, yeah, there are, I mean, there's quite a lot of reading to be done, and that all happens in just 40 minutes. And this is the challenge, one of the major challenges. I'll just briefly touch on writing because writing and reading are so closely connected in nature anyway and they do together make up the largest portion of the selective test results uh, so writing is is testing some of the same skills because it's about the creativity that students can um, display as well as their control over language their understanding of vocabulary and how fluent they are their expression the way language is structured, the way things are paragraphed. So all of these skills, I mean, a lot of them cross over. Good readers make good writers and vice versa. So just some tips on that beforehand, before the test, and for you it's a little while away, but of course we're here today because you, you care about the preparation for this. Uh, reading and reading and reading. Reading, the more reading a student does, the better they become as a writer. Okay, so both of these things will help one another. It also helps to improve and build vocabulary, which is essential for the reading test as well. On the day of the test, and again, this is, we're projecting right into the future, but you start right back now looking at the practice test and just starting to embed some of these uh, habits in everyday learning, then you know, we can really develop and master the skills over a period of time, which is less stressful and much more effective. So underlining key nouns and verbs in questions all the time is very useful. Establishing the purpose of a text, whether you are reading it or writing it, knowing who the target audience is, understanding the author's motivation behind their text. If it's writing, you're deciding which person to write in. If it's reading, you are thinking critically about, is this text written in first person using I, me, my, second person, you, or third person, they, she, him, etc. Uh, this really helps to understand 
the characters, but also the author and, you know, plot events, characterization, lots of things. Planning, planning out of content and ideas, the structure, language, themes, tones, characters. So for writing, you're planning these things, you're creating them yourself. For reading, you're responding to them, to somebody else's characters, to the tone that of another author, to the themes that they have created in their text. And then, of course, if you're writing, then you, you write um, your practice and edit. There's such, um, well, this, there's many examples of students losing easy marks in this part because they didn't edit and they leave you know, wads of writing together, for example, that, that should be broken into paragraphs or easily fix spelling or grammatical or punctuation errors. Okay, so just back to focus really closely on the reading comprehension questions. We want to think about how students can identify what type of question they're being asked because this means you can find the answer more accurately and more quickly. So knowing the type of information that the question is looking for is very useful. That's the same list. Again, I'm not going to read it out because I'm going to just go through each one of them briefly with you. We don't have enough time to look at these in detail. I mean, obviously over the next terms and year, is is the time to to really focus and um, unpack and practice these skills but just to give you an overview of what is in the test what matters what is going to be useful to spend time on that's what i'm here to to take you through this evening so finding the main idea pretty straightforward we're looking for what the passage or the text is mostly about so there are some questions you can ask when reading like what is this mainly about you can find that information in the heading in subheadings in the topic sentences even in the conclusion or in a conclusive statement in a text so knowing where to go to find the main idea in a text the top the bottom the topic sentences this saves time makes you a better reader the recalling of facts and details so important because of the amount of reading, especially the sections where there's multiple extracts and then jumping backwards and forwards between the question and the passage and the question and the passage. So being able to recall the facts, recall the details of the text, having highlighted them throughout the first reading, knowing how to skim and scan a text rather than reading every single word closely. Uh, these skills help you to be able to to find those facts and details quickly. Um, third dot point there to answer a question about a fact or a detail you you usually do need to look back. Why? Because it's not a general theme question. It's not a general main idea question. It's about a detail. So the question is you know, very specific to that detail. And sometimes, especially in multiple choice questions, the options might be very similar to each other. So being able to read for detail, another reading skill, really important. Understanding the sequence. So sequence refers to the order. Now it can be the order of a text, like in a story, the beginning, the middle and the end. It could be the way information is sequenced in a paragraph using uh, conjunctions or these um, signal words such as firstly, secondly, then, after that, later, next. You know the signal words I'm, I'm talking about. Knowing those words and what they point to helps to be able to quickly find the correct answer for any sequence questions. Sometimes sequencing questions are about parts of the text that um, we need to imagine. And that's testing a thinking skill, right? That's higher order. What might happen after the text or before? It's not in the text, but you use the information you have read and it's implied what may occur. So sequencing can also ask 
questions like this. Recognising cause and effect, really prominent skill uh, or, or style of writing in persuasive text because there are arguments being made, but also in explanation, so information text too. They, or questions about cause and effect, they usually begin with words like why did this, why did this character do that, um, what happened, or to explain because. You know, that's a cause and effect signal word also. Our next skill, there is a whole section. The first section of the reading exam actually is about comparing and contrasting. So before I mentioned in the 2022 paper, it compared two texts based on the, the theme or the, the idea of dogs and the relationship that they have with humans. Uh, the Call of the Wild extract and the other, um, I think it was a feature article from my memory. So both of those texts were comparing and contrasting. The questions were about this. Now, what does that mean? Well, we're looking for similarities and differences or likenesses and differences between the text, the content, yes, but also the style of writing. So stylistic features or the, the language that has been used to express the ideas. So questions that ask you to compare and contrast, you would learn through your mastery that they contain keywords like uh, that something is most like or it's different to, is it similar or alike? They, they would indicate to you that it was a comparison. In that first part of the, the test, it's very clear because it actually just explicitly states that, that it's about these two texts. In other examples, it might be more subtle and not so obvious that it's a comparison. Okay, our next skill is making predictions, which of course is anticipating something that we think would happen in the future. So this links to the sequencing I mentioned earlier. Questions about predictions can ask the students to imagine or to, yeah, predict what might happen after or what might happen next or what could have happened earlier in a text. These questions require uh, reading for clues or reading in between the lines because the answer is not going to be in the text. It's not going to be an explicit here it is answer. This is again testing those thinking skills uh, and using background knowledge your common knowledge, your own creativity to be able to add information to the text you've read and then make predictions. Okay, this one's essentially about vocabulary, finding word meanings in context. So context, we know and understand, is everything that exists around a text when it was created, the time period, the culture, the political um, climate, a whole range of, of factors influence the context and the context of the author, right, the person who wrote it. So Jack London writing in 1903 is coming in, in America, it's coming from a, a very different context to somebody who's writing a feature article in Sydney in 2016. The world that that comes from is different and that can influence the question and the answer. It, of course, influences everything about the meaning of the text. So what do we do with these questions? You should read words in the context that they are provided. I mean, look at the sentence that the word is within, look at the paragraph that the sentence is within and the text as a whole. A lot of the context questions come with multiple choice options. So uh, being able to try, try and see, like trial and error to see which answer fits. This is a strategy that you can learn and practice. There are lots of strategies you can learn for multiple choice questions. Okay, it's not just a case of knowing the right answer because you probably are aware Many times in multiple choice, there's more than one right answer 
even all four options could be somewhat correct. And the student's job is to discern or to decide which one is the most correct answer. Okay, so again, these are skills that you can work on and, and, and uh, master over the next 12 months. Just take a look at that last paragraph on this page. I'm not sure if you can see my cursor or not. Uh, the example of this is about context. The example is the word bright. Okay, so bright on its own, if, if the question asks you what is, what is the meaning of the word bright, the answer could be different depending on the sentence. So you need to go back, read for detail, find the, the context of bright. So, for example, he is a bright child can um, mean two things. Either it means he's filled with light or maybe he's really smart. Um, again, depending on the context, it changes the meaning. Okay, a really important reading skill, drawing conclusions and making inferences. These are, again, higher order thinking skills. Being able to draw conclusions and make inferences means you can figure things out on your own, like what the main idea is or what is an implied piece of information, what types of themes can be um, deduced or seen, illustrated or symbolised in a text. So the second dot point there, the author doesn't always tell you everything explicitly and if they did it would be boring writing it's all telling okay they show us things things are revealed over time things are influenced by our own personal life and our own individual interpretations okay so this is called implied information or inferential information and questions about drawing conclusions uh, might start with phrases like you can tell or it do you, it's probable that the best suggestion is um yeah these these two skills are something that you develop over a long period of time and with maturity as well as you ex or are exposed to more and more ideas through reading and and viewing of texts you'll be able to understand implicit and inferential information further. Distinguishing between facts and opinions. This is crucial when we're asked the purpose of a text, the who the target audience is, what the motivation of the author or the writer was. So we know a fact is something that is true, can be, you know, um, checked, uh, more scientific in some situations, in some situations, it might be research. An opinion, though, is telling us how a person feels. So it's opinionated, of course, it's personal, it's biased. So statements that are opinions, they often contain uh, high modality words or emotive words. So most the best, the nicest, the greatest, the fastest, any of these descriptors that add opinion to a statement or to information. It's important to be able to, to distinguish between the two, but also know why they're used. For example, a persuasive text uses a, a combination of facts and opinions. Why? Because facts add authority. They give integrity. They are believable. Opinions uh, provide emotion and pathos and ethos, which are, uh, if you don't know what they are, you can search them. Um, but these things combined create a highly persuasive text, whether you are reading it or writing it, knowing that makes you a really critical and clever reader. Identifying the author's purpose, I've discussed this quite a few times. There's usually questions about the author's purpose, whether they are explicit or implied. So, I mean, there's the three main purposes, persuasive, informative, um, people add description in there, but mostly it's the three of them uh, with entertainment texts. Within all of those purposes, there are lots of 
other, you know, subgroups. So those are the broad ones we can look for. But um, when you're a very good reader, close reader, you, you notice subtleties. For example, in uh, informative texts, there might be the use of um, entertaining or emotive style language for a purpose. I mean, the text as a whole is informative, but it includes elements, aspects, uh, skills of other types of writing. So that's a subtle and a really advanced um, way of reading. We're nearly at the end. Uh, I know you're taking in a lot of information. And as David said, this slideshow is available later, so you can come back and, and look closely if you need to. Uh, interpreting figurative language. This applies to almost all text types, even the sometimes informative text types. So figurative language is when language is used to describe things um, in a figurative way, not a literal way. Our common ones are metaphors and similes, uh, you know, personification. These are our common figurative language techniques. There's, a, there's heaps of them. I, can't, I couldn't possibly list them all right now. The poetry questions always have something to do with figurative language. And to be honest, so in, in the past, so do those compare and contrast questions at the beginning. Uh, the question might not be like, is this a metaphor? That's too simplistic. However, you need to be able to read and understand the metaphors in the text in order to, to know what's going on, right? So it's not a case of just being able to identify. That's, you know, easy once you've learned them. It's not identifying. It's understanding. Well, what does this mean and why has the author chosen to use it? It's not accidental. There's intention, there's planning, there's thought put into the metaphors or the simile that has been used. And so, again, a good reader wants to be able to think critically about those things. Summarising, self-explanatory, to write a summary uh, is the main points of any text or any passage. Being able to summarise, though, is a reading skill which helps you with speed. And you want to be quick, right? We want to develop skills that enable us to read accurately but quickly. So, again, I mentioned some techniques like uh, skimming and scanning through texts or uh, reading for details, highlighting, looking at the structure of a text and where the paragraphing is, focusing in on any subheadings, topic sentences, the conclusive statements. These speed reading, skimming and scanning techniques help. Once you can summarise the main ideas quickly, then you've already, you know, um, covered a lot of content in that first read. And I'm sorry to talk about it so much, but the time, the time is what gets a lot of students. Uh, so practising within that time frame, learning how to read accurately and quickly within the time frame is very, very uh, crucial. And my last slide, uh, not mistakenly or accidentally, is about time management and how to use it wisely and how to be able to work steadily because we don't want students to be panicked. We don't want our kids to be stressed. That doesn't help. And it's not a pleasant experience for anybody. And, it, you know, frankly, it's not productive for anyone either. So how do we learn how to achieve the best of our ability and also uh, be steady and be calm. So, I mean, there's the standard advice, a couple of pointers I've said here, when you go to practice one of these tests, you might like to do that um, after, not tonight, another time. If you find a question too difficult, make sure that you never spend too much time on it because you can just mark an answer as I'm not sure and come back to it later, okay? we. In my experience, again, I see a lot of students get stressed and spend a lot of time figuring out, figuring out one question. And they need, it's actually a skill to know, okay, I need to stop and move on. There's a confidence in that that can be learned. 
Um, there's no time warnings in the test usually, although there's been a lot of changes happen, so you never know. But usually it's down to the student to be able to manage their own time. Um, I mean, there's a whole there's a whole session I could talk about just this. I wanted to finish with this point because I want to I want to make it clear that the selective test is not is not just about the information or the skills. It's actually about being able to um, master the art of sitting a test, and that is being familiar with what it looks like how it's set out, looking at practice ones, doing practice ones, getting feedback, practicing within the time frame. And also if you're not making it in the time frame, don't despair. There's skills and things you can practice and learn, tips and tricks to be able to speed up that process um, and still read accurately. So that that's I think why um, just some consideration about the test itself is important while we also focus on all of those reading and comprehension skills um, as we go. So that's, that's my session for this evening. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope you've taken some uh, useful information away from tonight. And as David said, he can answer some more questions for you if you have them. Um, and you can find this slideshow or this webinar later on for a second look as well. So thank you, everybody, and thank you, David, for your time. Thank you very much, Kelly. Okay, let's move on to the uh, next information. Yeah. So many parents are asking how was our performance in the previous the, the selective school exam, which is last year, 2022. Yeah, we got heaps of successful story from our students. Yeah, and they are now year seven. So, for example, James Ruth, we got total of 63 students. And the Boca Hill, we have 86 and 55 North Sydney boy, 42 Swans figures. Yes, this is just as of last year, October. Probably some of them will also receive the late offer from the waiting list. But overall, I can uh, say that we got more than 1,000 successful students in the last year's exam. And I think this year's exam were also uh, very challenging, but our students, they try their best to, to, to prepare the exam. So, I believe we will make another successful year this year in August. So uh, I really appreciate the feedback and information about the exam uh, information for our year five parents so that I can share with our parents. So, so how can we make it happen again next year with our year five students? Yeah, I think I believe we have the best program for the selective school exam preparation anyway, yeah? So we got WMT program to build up a strong foundation in all essential test areas, and also the STTC, the selective trial test course, and uh, we will provide lots of uh, trial test experience and practice with all types of exam questions. And also we will utilize all available uh, holiday period so that we can make them maintain their achievement level even during the holiday time. And also uh, all the courses are closely connected with our cyber school that will provide lots of revision material assignment and additional practice questions, etc. And also there are special event, which is calling it ASET, Australian Select Achievement Test that will be available for year five students in September this year, okay? So all these courses and events will be very related to the actual exam next year. Yeah. So it will help our students to measure their achievement level and choose the right school in, uh, in term four in October, okay? 
Uh, especially for the autumn school holiday, uh, we organize special uh, intensive course for two weeks. The first week is four days intensive WMT covering all required topic in reading, writing, mathematics, and thinking skills. And also in the second week, for those parents who are concerned about their child's writing skills, yes, we have a special writing course for five days to develop their uh, creative and technical writing skills. So please consider these uh, good course for the uh, holiday time. Yeah. After the Easter break, yes, they can continue their study. Yeah. Okay. And also, uh, I'd like to remind our new term schedule, which is term two, starting from 22nd April for 11 weeks. Yeah. So we will provide yeah, year five term to WMT course, which will be a, which will have a great emphasis in reading and writing uh, and thinking skill as well. Yeah. So it will be new revised modules, including a new English enrichment module. So we will introduce new English enrichment module to focus, put more focus on selective school reading test topics. Okay. And also lots of extension, extensive material on cyber school. So please make sure you know your child's online assignment on cyber school. So they after the uh, each module lesson, they have to find an area you try to need to put more focus on the cyber school uh, revision material, including video lesson, will be very useful. Okay? So the video lesson will explain each question step by step, and we will also make them to try the revision question on a weekly basis and check the result. And also, uh, we will provide additional Tuesday live lesson. Yeah? Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, live lesson. Yeah, they can uh, meet the teacher again and uh, do the uh, previous module study again. And they catch up any part of the lesson they missed. Yeah? Yeah. And selective trial test course is quite essential course who are aiming for the selective school. Okay. So we will have around 20 sets of trial test papers for this year. So please make sure your child start trial test course uh, in early stage, you know, yeah. so, so that they can familiarize and experience all types of exam questions before the exam. Okay? Yeah. The selected trial test course will also uh, provide lots of reading material yeah, to uh, enhance their test performance. Yeah. So we already I published a uh, special news set about this. So they can, every week, if there is an assignment they need to complete on cyber school after the uh, trial test, mathematical reasoning and thinking skill, the revision, would be available. We are calling it STTC challenge. So after the uh, mathematical reasoning and thinking skill test, during the English test week, they need to complete all the challenge questions it provides. It is just to show the number of uh, questions they missed, a maximum 10, 15 questions, I think, in each subject. Yeah, they need to complete and find the correct answer. Yeah, it will show the question again and again until they uh, find the correct answer, okay? And also, during the mathematical reading and thinking skills, we will uh, post additional reading test, yeah, which is extra. Yeah. So they need to do the reading test again, yeah, 30 question in 40 minutes outside the school. Yeah. And also writing retest is also available for students who achieved below the standard writing mark, they can submit the second writing to get the second feedback from the teacher. Okay. And also uh, there is a vocab list yeah, to study vocabulary skills. So they can download the vocab list and memorize all the important vocabulary and do the self test on cyber school. Yeah. And also writing, yeah, we are uh, 
emphasizing the writing skills. So uh, we will post test review video for the writing component and also the STTC the point annotation video. Yeah. So every English reading test, there is a point questions, around four to five questions. So after the uh, reading test, they can check the points they faced in the exam and get some idea about how to annotate the given point. Yeah, so our teacher will guide through the video, okay? Yeah. So it will be every week, yeah. on a weekly basis, students are required to complete all the assignment yeah, on Sunday school. This is very important. Okay, uh, yes, due to the time limit, uh, I will go through the question. Yeah. Uh, let's, yeah. Also, I want to uh, remind you to check out our Facebook discussion uh, group uh, to communicate with, uh, with us on a timely manner. You will get a uh, better idea and make you up to date. Yeah. Okay, so um, yeah, we have more than 400 attendees tonight. Let me have a look at the Q&A, uh, questions from our parents. Um, there are so many questions, let's see. Ah. Okay, from the oldest one, yeah. Okay. Uh, is this webinar and slide will be available later? Yes. I will post the webinar slide on Cyber School News section. Yeah. yeah. It will be available tomorrow, from tomorrow. So you can just uh, check out the slide and take your time to revise all the slide contents. And also, we are recording this webinar. And it will be available to replay yeah, from the same webinar link. Or uh, once we post on our YouTube channel, yes, you can watch it on our YouTube channel. OK? Uh, OK. Um, and what is it? What is, it? is this trial test for the paper test or not? Ah, yeah, it will be paper test because this year's exam is a paper test. And I think next year's exam will be also paper test. So we will start with the paper test. If there are any changes in the middle of the course, if there are any official announcements from the Department of Education about changing the test format, yeah, we will just uh, change it accordingly. Yeah. So it will be paper test, I think. Okay, so yeah, uh, the test. The test will be on... Uh, in May next year, when your child become year six. So that means term two, year six, term two. That'll be the exam day, yeah. Okay. Uh, yes, we are recording this video, so you can watch it, yeah. Uh, there is a question about NAPLAN. So why did you say about the NAPLAN? Why is it important? Yeah. This is just in case uh, something happened on the exam day and unable to sit to the exam, then what, what happened? You will have a chance to lodge the special request form, which is called illness and disadventure form. So if you try to be sick, yeah, you need to provide doctor certificate and also uh, the disappointment then something happened, incident, accident near the exam or on the exam day. In that case, how they can assess the students' academic performance. And they said they will consider their plan, their plan result. So they can access all students' their plan result yeah, and their rank in the national standard. So they, they may use the NAPLAN. That's why uh, I uh, said it's important, okay? Yeah. Okay, and could you please advise that uh, the total 4,248 students intake for the year seven, is that only for the fully selective? No, 
is including the partially selective school, around 3,000 placement for the fully selective school, and around uh, 1,200 uh, partially selective schools. Okay. okay, there are many questions about Netherlands, so I already answered about the Netherlands. This is the case when the students couldn't sit the selective exam. Just in case, just in case they need they need to have the good Maplan uh, performance. Okay, yeah. Okay, and uh, yes, the QR code. Ah, the downloading the uh, past selective school papers. Yes, it's available. On uh, yeah, I will share the direct link through the chat box, okay? Yeah. Okay. Let's go to this uh, website and just scroll down to the past papers and you will uh, be able to see the individual paper download link, okay? Yeah. Okay, and yes, the one plus one reading, that's for the STTC course, the yeah, selective trial test course, after the uh, official reading test in the following week, there will be additional reading test online on cyber school. So during the mathematical reasoning and thinking skill test week, you need to complete one more reading test yeah, from the cyber school. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yes, uh, we will organize uh, Another webinar uh, next term during term two. There will be additional. There will be another selective school exam information webinar. At that time, I will focus on thinking skills. Yeah, and then in term three, mathematics. Okay. How many schools can we choose as an option? Yeah, you have maximum three schools choices. Yeah, so you can choose just one. Maximum is three schools. Yeah, according to your preference. Okay. And yeah, if you want to check out the actual uh, question analysis for the last year's exam, I already mentioned about uh, the YouTube channel. Yeah. Or you may uh, find out the banner on CyberScore. Once you log in, you will find the special banner that is the link for the past uh, the 2022 Selective School exam analysis video. So that our teacher went through every single question one by one, yeah, step by step. So you can watch it. It is around more than one hour because it just went through all the questions. Yeah. Just to check our YouTube channel or go to the cyber school. The selective school have a cutoff score? No, there is no cutoff score. They no longer uh, release the, any the, the score. They only provide the performance band for each test component. So it's very hard to figure out the minimum entry score. That's why the STTC, our STTC is very important because we know their STTC performance and position rank and the actual outcome in the selective. So we have a quite reliable uh, data in terms of the selective school entry mark based on our STTC scores, okay? When is the selective test today? Uh, it hasn't announced yet, but it's usually in early May, the second week of term two. Yeah. That will be the uh, exam day. And once we got a confirmation, yes, I will share with you. Okay. Okay. Um, yes, I think it's time's up. Yeah, already yeah, more than an hour. So if you missed any part, yes, you can replay it from the same webinar link. And yeah. Uh, just a quick note that the term two is coming to close and autumn and term two enrollments are now open. So please check out the newsletter and please don't miss out the early bird discount offer. Yeah. For the autumn, tomorrow will be the due date for the maximum discount and for the term two, 11th of April. Yeah. So we are now accepting the term two and autumn uh, post enrollment booking. Okay. Okay, thank you very much for joining the webinar, and I hope to see you again in the next webinar with more detailed 
information about the thinking skills and updated information about the selective school exam schedule. Probably it'll be week eight of term two. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, have a great evening and see you again. Bye.